I'm in Ottawa. It's freezing. I'm not going outside. Uh, so instead, I thought that I would give you some of my thoughts, five of them, on game one of the conference quarterfinal series between the Bulldogs and the 67s on Friday night. Okay, so one. Uh, this game, I thought for the most part, was closer than the score might suggest. It was 9-3 at the end of the day, uh, but the 67s were only up 4-2 after two periods, and the Bulldogs were actually winning um, at the halfway point of the game, and not just winning, but controlling the pace. So things totally spiraled out of control after that, you can't deny it. Um, and yes, the score was lopsided ultimately, but it also wasn't as bad as it seems. Okay, two. The things that went wrong in game one were the same things that went wrong when the Bulldogs went 0-5 against Ottawa in the regular season. Things like puck management, being caught out of position, turnovers, D-zone coverage, all that stuff. It was a problem even when the Bulldogs were playing really well early in this game, so they've got to clean that up in game two. So on a related note, and this is number three, those issues led to way too many power play chances for Ottawa in game one. Eight, eight. And again, this was a problem in Hamilton's regular season series against the 67s. It was an even bigger problem on Friday with Ottawa scoring four power play goals. They also added a shorthanded marker, which was their fourth against the Bulldogs this season. Not good. Four. The players that caused the biggest problems for Hamilton in game one were exactly the ones you'd probably expect. Sasha Shimolevsky, Austin Keating, Noel Hoffenmeyer, Hamilton native Kyle Maximovich, uh, whose crazy amount of OHL playoff experience was actually really apparent from the opening puck drop. 56 games, I mean, that's nuts. Uh, Ottawa is super deep up front, so Hamilton's going to be mismatched no matter what in this series. But I think a little more attention has to be paid to the Shemilevsky and the Maximovich lines in particular, both of which were pretty great on Friday. At the same time, Hamilton's big players, Matt Strom, Jan Jenik, Arthur Kalia, they're going to have to do a bit more production-wise moving forward. Uh, huge shout out to Isaac Nurse, though. He was awesome in game one. Okay, number five. We made it. This one has nothing to do with hockey. I just want to take a minute to give some credit to Ottawa's game operations staff, which made the atmosphere really fun on Friday. Attendance was great. There was flip cup at intermission. The 67s showed up in cowboy hats. It was just a really good experience. And it's really nice to see a team, even in a historic junior hockey market, not take itself too seriously. Okay, and one more bonus. Six, prediction time. If the Bulldogs are going to win, even a game in this series. Uh, Sunday makes a little bit of sense. So the 67s are gonna be extra confident, I think, after the way game one ended. And Hamilton might be able to take advantage of that. But at the end of the day, I still don't think this one, unfortunately for you Bulldogs fans out there, is gonna go longer than five games. The 67s are just too deep, too well coached, and too strong defensively to draw this one out.